back on a 2005 Jaguar, it, this place reeks of stale gas. The owner pumped all the crap out of the tank to make our installation job easier. So that's the leftovers of the old pump. You see snap lines everywhere. And we got a brand new unit, Delphi Technologies, courtesy of Rock Auto. Comes with everything, you know, the transfer pump, or at least the lines that go to that side. So we'll have to fish that through. And hopefully this thing will be driving on its own today. So you can see the snapped off lines right here. So I wanted to use those to our advantage. Loop a uh, piece of thin nightcop tubing stretch that through and then we'll use that to pull the new lines um, back over. Alright, so here's our little transfer unit with the sending unit. So we'll put that aside. Leftovers of the pipes, I got this looped around so we'll gently feed that through. is that these lines, if you pull on them, they're just going to snap in half, so you have to be real gentle. And pull the, uh, the remains through, so you can see that. Try to, they're just literally crumbling in my hand. <laughs> so we'll try not to drop anything in the tank. Alright, we're in pretty good shape here. There's the uh, metal assist rod. So let me untie that and we'll put the new pump in. Okay, so we got the lines through, but I just realized we also need the wiring for that sending unit and that should come with these transfer hoses somewhere. I lose it because there's a wire that goes down alongside there and then the float this one will stay with this unit here and then the other one we actually need to put a float on there from the old pump. So the new pump actually came with a new float, which is really nice. That should be in the correct position there. Up and down. And I think we're ready to just shove this thing in. With transfer pipes and everything. And a new gasket right there. That should be happy. All right, so I managed to get this clamp on here with the um, the big hose clamp, it's tight, hopefully it doesn't leak. Pressure line is on, connector is on. Let's finish up that transfer pump. So the way this transfer unit works is gas is pumped from the main pump into here, and there's a little nozzle right there, like a small jet, and that sends, picks up more gas through this little um, cap right here that I took off, right through there and drives it back to the fuel bowl. So, I wanna make sure this part is all clear because it looks really crappy in there. So we're gonna blow that out, make sure that stuff goes through that jet. So we're gonna reverse flush this pump with a old WD-40 and some compressed air. So right into that jet. You can see it is spitting it out here. And we'll go this way. Good. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's put this in the car. So, both sides of the pump are in and tight. And we're going to put some good stuff in here. Ethanol free. Put a few gallons in. We'll see if the Jag fires up. All right. Battery's connected. Heard the fuel pump. Let's prime it a couple times. Yeah. Key out. Let's see. There it goes. Let's see if it starts. Come on, come on, come on. Yay. There we go. Pretty smooth. You hear the pump running? Sweet. It's still low on coolant, but let's see if it goes into gear. Yep. Yep.
Excellent. Fuel gauge looks to be accurate. About five gallons in there. Amazing. <laughs> okay, we added some coolant. Let's see. No more red light. Oh, it still says engine coolant low. Maybe it's a sensor problem. We'll let it warm up a little bit. All right, so check engine light came on. We got some codes, just misfire codes, misfire, excessive emissions fault, blah, 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 blah. Let's clear all these out. It's running pretty smoothly right now. Seems to be at least. Okay. And the coolant temp sensor is missing. There is a plug for it. So I found this plug just hanging out right here. And at the bottom of the tank, there should be a sensor that kind of screws in. It's missing, so this is gonna say low coolant all the time. But we're, we are building some pressure. This is topped off. There's the level. So, don't see any obvious leaks at the moment. Take it for a spin. All right, looking at some live data. Amazing, fuel trims are basically 0%. That's what we wanna see. Equivalence ratio, bank one and two are happy. Mass airflow sensor, throttle position, we're at 206 degrees, rock steady. Let's take it up and down the road. All right, we're rolling. It does sound like a race car. I think that's it, why it does shift. Check yeah. engine lights flashing, okay. I think that's the way it's supposed to sound. We'll uh, clear the brakes off a little bit. Uh -huh. Restricted performance, uh oh. That's why. Okay, you know what that is. What's that? It's for, uh, it's for uh, valet parking. Oh, how do you turn that off? Sometimes, I don't really know. Uh, <laughs> supposedly, you clear out the uh, battery and then it stops. Okay. I didn't have that problem, but no, you don't have, no, you'd have, I know what So again, we have a couple pending random misfire code cylinder two misfire detected. Misfire catalyst damage fault bank B. Misfire excessive emissions fault. So it is a little shaky. And the exhaust sounds a little strange. This car has been running three years, so a lot of uh, variables here. We could go to misfire counter, see if those are available in Jaguar OEM menu. Log in the Jaguar. It's got a little slow to rev up. Kind of falls in its face a little bit. All right, so looking at the fuel trims, let's put it under load just here in drive. I'm gonna load it up. Look what happens to the short term trims. Bank one goes through the roof, bank two goes down through the floor. We have a bank to bank imbalance. Look at that. And they're exactly the opposite. Now, if you think about this, which bank is bad? The one that's lean needs more gas or the one that's rich and is subtracting gas? Think back to the twisted camshaft case study we did with uh, Eric go. It was setting a lean code for a bank, you know, the front bank, but where was the problem? On the rear, the bank that wasn't breathing properly. And what could explain a bank that's not breathing properly? First suspicion is a clogged catalytic converter. So, bank two we saw going down. 
So on bank two, I want to put in a pressure transducer, maybe take one spark plug out or the O2 sensor or something, and see if that pressure builds up. Um, that's going to be my suspicion. It's going to need a cat. Okay, so we're suspecting bank two exhaust restriction. That's the first thing I want to check. Just popped out a spark plug, and we'll see on the exhaust stroke on cylinder number, um, I guess they number them one, two, three, four, five, six. This is cylinder number four on bank two. If that's elevated, we can always compare to bank one, but we'll know if there's an exhaust restriction. So, PHAD pressure transducer, 265 PSI unit. Got our Pico scope rolling, and the seat is always sliding back and forth on its own. So, let's select the custom scales. By the way, this is only for Pico scope six. Ecoscope 7 is not friendly with custom scales, so I recommend that you stick with stick with number or uh, Picoscope 6. So we're at 0 psi. Let's uh, let's crank it up. And by the way, here's the firing order: 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we're on actually cylinder number 2 on bank um, bank 2. This is the even bank. All right, let's crank it up. Should have a single cylinder misfire. Okay, and I'm just gonna <laughs> put it. Let's put it in gear and just load it. Okay, that's good enough. Pause it and review the data. All right, let's take a look at this waveform. We can already see the problem. We're at 10 PSI on startup, then at idle drops about 5, under load it didn't really want to rev up, but we're at 15 PSI, and then under a snap throttle, we're going up to 30. So that's proof enough for me to take this exhaust system apart. So Bing 2 Cat is suspected clogged up. Let's do the same exact experiment on bank number one, just to have a nice uh, comparison. But in this case, the pressure transducer is absolutely the right tool for the job. So I was trying to put the spark plug back in, and it wasn't going in very well. I'm like, hmm, is something messed up with the threads? Well, no, the adapter came off of my pressure transducer. And then I tried screwing the spark plug into the adapter, and this is what happened. <laughs> It was mechanically regapped very well. I tightened it down nice. And but it's an auto light, so I don't feel too bad. I tell the owner to get fresh spark plugs. I don't know if he's upset or not. I think he finds it more uh, <laughs> comical <laughs> that uh, I did that. But my bad. Um, try to get the adapter out and get another spark plug. Just so happens I had an AC Delco plug in stock in my truck, and it's identical in shape. In size to the one that was smashed, so I think that should work. Let's pop it in and do a back pressure test on the other bank. All right, so we fixed that little mistake. Now I got electrical tape on the adapter, so hopefully that won't get stuck. And pressure transducer, let's fire it up on bank one and compare the waveforms. All right, so this is already saved. We'll play it and fire it up. Absolutely no back pressure on bank one. We're good. Okay, it's all we need. So an update on the 2005 Jaguar S-Type V6. Um, yeah, the fuel pump was uh, the tip of the iceberg and once we drove it, um, there was another problem. Severe low power caused by a restricted exhaust on bank two. 
So at that point, the diagnosis was complete. My recommendation was replace the bank two catalytic converter, um, and also replace those cracked lock rings on the fuel pumps. So the owner took it to another local shop. He wanted everything done and inspection. So uh, two months later, finally the Jaguar is back on the road, driving 100%. Um, customer was very happy. Uh, that took a while. I don't know why it took two months, but that's about as long as it took me to um, get that Triumph GT6 back on the road after it sat 25 years. The Jaguar only sat three years. So parts availability. I think it's easier to get parts for that Triumph, honestly, <laughs> than the Jaguar, and they're a lot less expensive. But happy ending. So thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. So what tool was instrumental in the second half of that diagnosis, the low power complaint? The pressure transducer. Quick and easy, pop out a spark plug, boom, 100% guaranteed you have a restricted exhaust. No guesswork. Um, and it's still available. So this is the unit here, 265 PSI uh, transducer. And just go to the website. 450 bucks for the kit. Now, with this ridiculous inflation, I'm going to raise the price very soon, uh, probably 50 bucks to $500. Um, because all the components cost 10 to 20% more, and it's just uh, getting not, um, you know, I do spend a lot of time making these. So eventually I'm going to have to raise the price. But it's still, uh, right now, for 450 bucks, it's available. And compared to the Pico 500, you know, WPS 500, this is the industry standard, I guess. It's 1300 bucks for the kit, and guess what? It's currently on back order, no ETA as of now. So get the PHAD transducer while you can. It does everything that the Pico can um, for diagnostics. If you want, no guesswork, convenience, and um, clear cut. Works great with Pico Scope 6. Those have the, uh, the custom scales, Pico Scope 7. I haven't touched it. You know, I tried doing the custom scales for that. I'm sorry if you're in Pico 7. Just download Pico Scope 6 so it can use the transducer. Um, thanks a lot.